So some of you may be wondering why I'm reposting this video. Well, already there's a little bit of a difference, as you can tell. Um, it's because the ending theme song that I did for this uh, was enough for me to get a copyright strike warning thingy from YouTube. Um, depending on what it would have been, I might have been like, yeah, fuck YouTube, I'll leave it up here. But in this case, I'm going to respect what it is, remove it, and replace it with something else. So I hope you guys liked a little bit of a change that I had made. Why do you think every Asian person is Chinese? That's like me saying to like a white person, hey, you're English. I am English. F oh, how cute. You're opening this video with proof that you are the brain dead bigot and I'm not. Personally, I'm more inclined to wonder if someone who's Asian is Japanese or not. Then I analyze what I'm seeing and, if I care enough, make myself acquainted with them and learn more about them. You, for example, appear to me to be more Korean than anything else. As for white Americans that do think Chinese first, it's probably because of the fact that China is the most populated country in the world, that there are more Chinese Americans than any other Asian group, or maybe both. I can't say for sure, as this question doesn't describe me. Go figure. Why do you think a film or TV show is diverse just because there are one or two black people in it? We're here too. Really? 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 <laughs> God damn it, Asian Bieber. Why? Why do you have to say such fucking stupid shit? And why is it that you people over at BuzzFeed seem to be obsessed with TV as being an argument point, and to recycle the same bullshit time and time again? Are you going to ask this again in the Native American video? Why are the awkward nerd characters the only roles available for Asians in film? We do a lot of other stuff too. For a media group that thrives on obscure names and shows I've never heard of, I'm a little surprised that this is what you think of the American media's portrayal of Asians. More often than not, I see Asians cast as badass fighters as well as food workers more than I do as nerds. Does Bruce Lee mean nothing to you people? Why are all of you talking about our penises? Yeah, that's great, Peter. Talk to my dick. While again, not really applicable to me, I would imagine that it's for the same bigoted reasons why blacks talk about whites, for boasting about their own dicks. Personally, I've seen enough porn to know that there are big whites, as well as small blacks, and average Asians. It wouldn't surprise me if there were big Asians out there too. I don't typically talk about dicks, unless it's my own. I'm more likely to talk about tits, as those are what I like. Check out your questions women have for men video. You guys make that observation too, and make it sound like it's a bad thing for whatever illogical reason. Why do you think Asians can't be the stars of movies? There aren't going to be any Asian celebrities out there to cast if we haven't been given a chance yet. Lucy Liu is a perfect example of how wrong you are, as well as Jackie Chan. If you want more Asians in American cinema, maybe you should encourage more Asians to get into theater. Much like how feminists should be trying to get more girls into the STEM industries instead of gender studies. And no, nobody should be given a chance, especially on account of something as trivial as what their race is when it comes to movie or TV roles, unless the character requires it. Now, I'll agree that it usually makes no sense to cast a white person to play an Asian character, but there can be exceptions. Do you think watching Korean dramas and K-pop makes you an expert on Korean culture? As a con-going anime fan, I have noticed something similar with other fans of Japanese entertainment and culture. It's kind of funny watching them fail horribly while discussing Japanese culture with someone, especially someone from Japan. I will admit that I have done this before, but I try to emphasize that I'm not an expert, just someone who knows that they are correct on a specific talking point. Depending on who I'm talking to and what about, I can see me coming off that way, especially this one time when I was in an English class back in college, I pointed out how someone else's textbook for a completely different subject had no idea what it was talking about. A lot of it really depends on how much research is done outside of anime and the quality of the sources. Like does me watching girls make me an expert in white culture? It does. Giggity giggity, giggity goo. Stick around. Remember how I mentioned that y'all bring up shows I've never heard of? 
Well, I have kind of heard of this, but I know very little, and I don't really feel like researching it, not even for images to add for this video. What little I do know would suggest that this show is more about lesbian culture than white culture, so no, it doesn't. At least I don't think it does. How do you cast white people to play roles that are meant for Asian people? I'm not gonna forget Emma Stone. That would be a question for Hollywood, not white people. And what does Emma Stone have to do with this? Did she cast people for a movie that you think should have had Asians in it? I didn't even know she had that much power. I hate these types of talking points, because they show how bigoted y'all can be. I'm willing to bet that you guys applauded the idea of Superman becoming Chinese, or Iron Man becoming a black teen girl. This also reminds me of a debate I've had with some of my fellow anime fans, who were pissed off that Memoirs of a Geisha had cast several Chinese people to play Japanese characters. My point was, who cares? At least they're Asian. Why do you think saying namaste is an appropriate way to greet me? Isn't namaste more of a general expression of thanks or something like that? Maybe it depends on the language or the connotation, I don't know. I think namaste is also a Japanese word that's akin to what the fuck, but I'm probably wrong on that. Despite what you may think for question 6, I don't know much on this topic. Why do you think saying ni hao is a good thing to say to us? If you're not actually going to converse with me in Chinese, I don't need to hear it. What? Ni Hao Kailin, and my apologies if I say that wrong, it's been a while since I've seen it, is a children's program with a little girl and her friends teaching English-speaking American kids some basic Chinese, much like Dora the Explorer teaches English-speaking American kids basic Spanish. We live in a culture that teaches our kids that it's okay to learn a few words and phrases in different languages in an attempt to make others feel more welcome, or something like that. It's just a basic greeting, no different than bonjour, Though I do agree with you on the conversing thing, which is why I personally don't do that. I think I eat dogs. I have two dogs. Why? Oh, I hate dogs. <laughs> if someone offers you a dog, just walk away. It's not so much that I think you eat dogs, so much as I know that some Asian cultures do. Having a pet dog doesn't negate the possibility of you eating other dogs. My Scottish ancestors had pet sheep, but still ate haggis, which is fucking delicious, by the way. I used to have pet fish, but would still eat salmon and trout. Why do you think that Hindi and Hindu are the same thing? Why My guess is that those people just simply haven't learned the difference yet. Well, to be fair, there was a time in which I didn't know the difference either. I used to think that Hindi was singular and Hindu was plural. How about providing the answers in your videos since you seem to think all of us white people are too stupid to figure it out ourselves? Are you so surprised that I can speak English well? I was born in America. That's a good question, and not one that I can give a genuinely good answer to. While I'm in America, I assume that everyone can speak American English until I learn otherwise. I'd probably be a little more surprised, or possibly even thankful, if you and I were to meet somewhere in Asia. Why do you always ask me, you know, where are you really from? Because obviously I'm from my mom's vagina. Why Aside from the obvious fact that I've never asked this of you, I've got to point out that your mom's vagina is not a geographical place, nor a demographic that denotes your lineage. But as for your question, it's because those people want to know more about you, who you are as a person, and that kind of stuff. It's called familiarizing. Why do you guys think it's okay to call me an immigrant or a foreigner? I was born in America. Aha! So my suspicions about you being born here were correct. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, my fellow American. However, I'm actually calling bullshit on this claim. Not that I don't think it happens, but that I don't think you believe all of us whites are like this. I think you're taking the baseless libtard approach to combating racism that isn't really there, sort of like what the anti-Trump protesters were doing. Why do you think it's okay to make bigoted claims about me on account of my skin color and continental lineage and putting them on YouTube just so that way you can make a profit? Why do you think Indians aren't Asians? India is literally in Asia. Why there's a few reasons why I could see someone thinking this, even though I agree with you that Indians are Asians. The first is that Indians don't look oriental. They are clearly distinguishable from the confusing clusterfuck of Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Vietnamese, and the lot. Another is that India has had a long-standing relationship with the Middle East, and as such, has many similarities that Oriental Asia doesn't have, such as clothing, accents, and the idea of refusing to eat certain animals. Why do you say it's basically the same thing when I tell you I'm from Sri Lanka and not India? They're different countries. Yeah, no shit. 
my guess is that those particular morons aren't very well diverse in geography. The next time that someone makes this claim, regardless of their race, tell them that Florida and Cuba are the same thing, and see how they respond. Why does a person of color automatically mean black to you? I'm a person of color too. Why Fuck off, Asian Bieber. It's USJWs that use that phrase, not us non-conforming white people. I personally find the expression to be stupid and insulting to whites and the color white in general. Go to a paint store and you'll see that white is a color. Do you libtards genuinely think that we European Americans have translucent skin or something? Person of color is a redundant phrase and I refuse to be stupid enough to use it. Why do you think all brown people are Indian? Why What in the blue hell is wrong with you? Seriously? How could you be so stupid? Have you forgotten who the American president is? I sure haven't. Hell, it's because of him that I'm counting down the days with glee until Trump gets into the White House. Which, by the way, is in 14 days. Do you think you deserve a high five for pronouncing my name correctly? Why in my specific case, it's because I announce for high school sports, and there's a wide variety of cultural names that I have to say from time to time. I received praise for getting names right and actively seeking the correct pronunciations, and I've had students as well as parents tell me that they appreciate my efforts and successes because many announcers don't give a flying fuck. The sad thing is I know that this last part is true. I have a Scottish surname, and it would get mispronounced a lot when I did school sports. Only one announcer that I ever talked to ever cared. Yes, I deserve props for it because many don't even care. Why do you think including diversity in the workplace reduces the quality of work? It's so boring. I thought you thought we were all nerds. Why? How does that work? Where does that expression come from? It doesn't make any sense. Make it stop. Your over-derisively inquiry is nonsensical enough that it demonstrates that you are most emphatically not a nerd. Wait, why the fuck was this written in such a manner? In test markets, four out of five victims surveyed were more frightened by big words. Fine. Now, it's because diversity can reduce the potential for the best person to have said job for someone who's mediocre, all to appease some asinine quota created by bigoted SJWs. Let's play with the myth that all Asians are nerds. How would a nerd be beneficial as a member of a construction crew? Beyond being the pencil pusher behind the desk, a physically weak nerd won't do a damn bit of good for such a company, especially when it comes to hauling cement bags, cutting wood, and the lot. Why should a company hire a 90-pound Asian nerd just to make some libtards feel better? Also, why aren't you demanding more diversity in the NFL? There's very few Asians there, or Hispanics, or Native Americans, or Arabs, and about three times as many blacks as whites, at least in terms of the rosters. Is it because a pencil-necked Asian calculator couldn't tackle a 200-pound running back or take a hit from a 300-pound defensive end? Do you now get the idea? It's about the best person for the job, not some fairy tale handicap to make irrelevant losers feel better about themselves. Damn it, Wade! Why do you think it's okay to call me exotic? I mean because it's a word. I will never understand why you SJWs whine about simple, harmless adjectives that are intended to do nothing but serve as descriptions from the perspective of those who are saying said word, especially the ones that are intended to be positive. It's not like they're saying easy or gross or something that can easily be taken as an insult. And technically, we're the largest part of the world population, so shouldn't white people be exotic? Why Yes, in terms of the world population, there are more Asian-based people than European-based, but that's not relevant for the overall American culture. Remember, we were influenced mostly by Europe, such as Greece, France, Germany, Russia, Spain, and especially the countries that make up the United Kingdom. As part of that, we have a basic idea on what exotic means. Part of that involves something natural and breathtakingly beautiful. We often see that being in common with Asians, in particular Asian women. Along with the uniquely stunning beauty that many Asian women have and the bright, colorful flora that comes from the continent, it also has to do with an appreciation for the cultures. That being said, do you have any idea what sort of response us whites get when we go over to Japan 
especially if we're good-looking, muscly white men. I do. Though, to be honest, that's more from seeing it happen to a friend of mine, not so much with me. Why do you think I can't see properly? We may want to pay attention. This could explain a critical plot point. It's because many Asians have slanted-looking eyes that reveal very little of their eyeballs, at least compared to most whites, blacks, and other races. Since you guys like media so damn much, you're probably familiar with the TV show that saw one of our music divas, Jessica Simpson, I think, traveling around the world and learning what different cultures consider to be beautiful. I don't remember the name of the show, but I'm sure that someone over at BuzzFeed knows what I'm talking about. And even if y'all somehow didn't, I'm sure that someone can find it. Despite my memory failing me, I do recall seeing one episode. In it, she went to Japan, and among the different things she saw and learned was that the most popular cosmetic surgery over there was one that, again as I recall, involved receiving a few cuts around the eyes so as to make them look bigger. Why? Because big eyes are considered beautiful over there. Many Japanese women want to look more like us white folk, and anime characters have big eyes as a result of this concept as well. Thanks, Betty Boop. You really think my eyes are that small? Why? I don't really feel like repeating myself, so I'll paraphrase. No, I don't think your eyes are small. But statistically speaking, Asian eyes are more likely to be more covered by their own eyelids than that of a white person. Now that I think about it, I wonder if BuzzFeed also has these types of stupid question videos that are from one marginalized group to another. Is it weird when all Asian people hang out, but it's fine when all white people hang out? What? More often than not, I see Asians hanging out with other Asians. There may be the occasional moments where it's a truly diverse group, or just an Asian and a white, or something else. But Asians hanging out together is something that I see quite a bit of. Maybe it's more of a New York City thing than a white person thing. So tell me, what does a sunburn feel like? I For fuck's sakes, your smug grin there is pure evil, you psycho racist bitch. Besides, you should know this as well. I know damn good and well that many Asians can get sunburns too. But if you really want to find out firsthand, wait until it's summer. Then go to a beach while wearing a swimsuit and lay down for several hours, like Harumi here. No sunblock, no sun lotion, no sunscreen, no comically giant umbrella. Or you could put giant gumdrops on your chest and throw yourself into an oven. That would probably work too. Why do you keep trying to justify yellow fever? I don't know why they use fever for all these things. It's not a disease, it's just f***ing. I'm honestly not entirely sure what the actual question is getting at. Whether it be the phrase that Asian Bieber is questioning, or its modern day application. And the guy's bonus content doesn't entirely make this any more clear to me. Here's the best answer that I think I can give. This phrase is fucking stupid. The Asian fetish gets this color-based nickname you're opting to question from a legit virus that, if I'm not mistaken, has been treated out of existence. Interesting history lesson. A yellow fever outbreak during the 1790s is why the nation's capital is no longer in Philadelphia. As I understand it, the use of the phrase in this context began in the late 1980s as a pun within the words of a play. I hate the phrase. Now, while I do like looking at Asian women from time to time and would not be opposed to having sex with one, I'm not entirely exclusively into them, nor would I want to hook up with every Asian woman that I see, so you, Asian Bieber, can relax. And for fuck's sakes, BuzzFeed, learn how to research this shit. Why are we being stereotyped as cheap or stingy? Maybe I'm just cost efficient. What? It may relate to the stereotype of busting your oriental ass off so as not to dishonor your parents or something like that. I have no idea. This is probably the first time I've ever heard of this concept, to be honest. I have, however, heard it said of Jews, and I can also explain the historical and cultural context behind it. However, I'm positive that this has nothing to do with the stereotype, nor would you be interested. Do you think all Asian people are smart? I mean, when I was in high school, there was a Korean valedictorian. No, actually, there was an Indian valedictorian. Damn it. I guess you guys are right. Asians are smart. I personally don't, especially after watching this video. I hate that I'm about to sound like a know-it-all weeaboo, but I've seen enough anime and live-action Japanese movies to know that y'all are familiar with the concept of stupid. In the Gaze for Straits video, one guy mentioned Sailor Moon, who was a freaking moron. Clearly, 
if one of the most iconic anime characters of all time is an airhead, and countless anime, both before and after, have often had at least one idiot in it, clearly there must be some degree of herp derpness in Asia. Have you tried that new white people restaurant? There's like a mayonnaise dish that is so mayonnaise -y. Okay, not gonna lie, that actually was kind of funny. Um, but to kind of address that, I'm assuming that you're probably talking about a burger joint or maybe some sort of southern cuisine place or something, I guess. I don't know.